Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hi everyone, Sue here at 1A Auto, and today we're doing calipers on our 07 Mazda 3 sedan. If you need any parts for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. So we're going to loosen the lug nuts with the weight of the car on the tire, and it's a 21 millimeter. Let's see if this is any. So now you're going to raise the vehicle with a jack and jack stands or a two-post lift if you have that. And now I can take the lug nuts off. It's up in the air. I'm going to remove the flex hose into the caliper. Uh, the nut is all rounded off, so I'm going to use locking pliers because we're going to replace it anyways. So this usually damages them. Not strongly recommended to use if you're going to reuse it. Uh, normally that would be a 13 millimeter wrench. And I think the uh, best process here, if we're going to replace it anyways, is I can just take a pair of cutters and cut that tin right out. I'm going to end up cutting the flex hose because we're replacing it anyways and then I can force a socket on that flare. Make sure you have a catch pan below you. And now I can put a socket, like a twisty socket or even get a better grip with a pair of locking pliers. But now everything's out of my way and I'm going to get that out of the caliper. I have um, these twisty sockets. See they swirl around and they lock on. So I'm going to hammer that on there, just tap it on. It's 13 millimeter. And uh, use my 3 8 ratchet. See if we can get this thing to come out of the caliper. We're going to replace the caliper um, because the bleeder screw broke and when we opened the bleeder screw to do the front brake service, the bleeder screw snapped off so I have to replace the caliper. Um, in the process, I have to replace the flex hose. So we're going to do the caliper now. I already did the flex hose. Um, I used a pair of hose pliers. They're made of plastic and they just squeeze rubber hoses tight so that the fluid would stop dripping out. I only recommend using these on a new hose, not an older hose if the hose has tons of mileage on it. When you squeeze it, you could be, they're already probably brittle on the inside and you could be doing a lot more damage. So you can also use a rubber boot, cap it off on the bottom, or uh, you just don't want to run your master cylinder all the way out. So use your discretion. I'm going to remove the anti-rattle clip. It's a spring and it goes in these little ear holes. Oh, just the other side, just because it's the spring, uh, they just slide in. I'm going to show you how to reinstall the new one when we get to that point. So with that out of the way, now I can take the slider bolts out. These are Allen heads, seven millimeter Allen heads, and they're mounted in the back. You have a top and a bottom. to the bottom one. Take that slider right out of there, show you what it looks like. So that's a slider pin for this particular design Mazda. There's your Allen head and there's two of them.
Now I'm just going to pry it out. I'm just using a little small pry bar. The inner pad will stay with the caliper because it's got the clips that sit inside the piston. Don't forget the hose is disconnected so fluid will come out. I'm just going to pour it out. Let me see if I can get the rest of the fluid out. Normal case of a brake job is you take the caliper off like we just did. See, this is the bleeder screw. It broke off flush inside. So if this bleeder screw did not break, I would not have taken the hose off. This would be hanging up there. And you just, the pad, front, the auto pad just comes right out. The inner pad is, got these three little, three little spring ears on it. Just pull it out, pry it out. And now with that, I'm going to remove the caliper bracket, 17 millimeter socket for both of these mounting bolts to the knuckle. Take both of them all the way out. Beautiful. So there we have our bracket. Before I install my new caliper, I'm going to take these boots off and take the sliders off and the bracket from the caliper. Let's see, oh, that one's already off. Okay, now we separated the caliper from the bracket. I'm going to install the bracket first before the caliper. And the reason I do this, even though it's new, I like to put my silicone paste on here even though they rebuilt it and they did it themselves. I'm gonna make sure that there's a lot of good water resistant lube in there after I install the bracket. So now I'm gonna reinstall the bracket, line up my mounting bolts. There we go. 17 millimeter socket. Tighten that down, and we'll get the torque specs. I'm going to torque the uh, bracket to the knuckle. The 17 millimeter is 75 foot pounds. Before I install the caliper, on the bracket, I'm putting some water resistant silicone paste inside here. I'm not going to put the sliders on, but I am going to put the pad in place. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I like to guide the bottom in first, then center both sides and push her on in. There you go. Now the, this outer pad goes on the bracket, then I'll slide this over. Here's the outer pad, and it's formed right to that bracket. And now you can see why I said if you're not installing a new caliper and using your old caliper, why you want those guides clean of rust, debris, or grease. This is what that pad will do as you apply the pedal and take your foot off the brake. They slides back and forth with the pressure of the caliper. The new one, just gonna slide right in. Gonna get the two mounting bolts and mount it up. Here we have our caliper slider guides pins. This is a seven millimeter. I feel like that started. I'm gonna put the top one on.
Caliper slider pins, a torque spec is 22 foot pounds with my seven millimeter Allen socket. I'm gonna move down to the bottom. The good thing about this caliper, it comes with these waterproof caps. Keeps the debris out and uh, water, road salt, and those slider pins. I'll reinstall those. Now I'm ready to put the outside spring on. New hardware, please. Even if you're using the old caliper, it costs pennies compared to putting the old spring on. These do have tension to them, so even though it's not broken, it might not have the proper tension. So I guide the top slot in, then I'm going to put the bottom one in. Sometimes you use a little bit of a hammer to tap that in. You can't mount it like that, so it's easier to put that in and then slide the spring up. Now holding that firmly, I'm going to put use my hand and pry it over. There we go. Now both springs are on that caliper. I'm going to let that sit like that. Once I get the hose attached and I pump the brakes up, I'll reassemble that just by tap, I mean reassure it's in by tapping it with a hammer, but the pads have got to be seated at that point. Going to reattach the new flex hose to caliper. Start that in the seat. Start that through fingers so you don't cross thread it. Just tighten this down with your 11 millimeter wrench. You want to bottom them out and really snug it. Yeah, that's good. Now I'm going to go lower the vehicle, top my fluid off, and I'm going to pop my brake up. Don't forget to disconnect your clamp if you have one on there. Load my vehicle, and now I'm at my master cylinder. And like everything, you check your manufacturer specs. This does say right on the cap, only dot three fluid, which I have. And I'm gonna top that off. Then I'll pump my brakes up and start my bleed. Always reinstall the cap. You never want dirt, debris, any forward substance to fall in. This will also be a good time to check for any leaks to make sure all the hoses were closed properly. Now I'm going to go open the bleeder screws and gravity bleed. I've taken the cap back off and I'm going to double check my top off my brake fluid because the caliper, new caliper got filled. I don't want to open the bleeder screw without making sure that I have enough fluid. Now I can go to the right front and open the bleeder screw. The, the bleeder screw on this particular car is an eight millimeter wrench or socket. We're just gonna let the gravity bleed and the fluid will come out. It's very important at this point not to pump the brakes. Now we're just going to let the uh, fluid come out and gravity bleed. We get all the air out. I am going to go to the other side after and bleed that side also because we replaced the caliper over there. In hydraulics, it's good to do them as a pair for equal stopping power. Even if one isn't visually bad, if it's older, the piston could be slower than the, uh, the newer one and you'll have different pressures. I'm gonna close this now and check my fluid and then go to the driver's side.
So at this point I still have nothing coming out gravity wise. So I'm gonna have an assistant do a pump and bleed all four wheels to make sure this brake system's properly bled and the best pedal we could have before we go down the road. Pump it up. Holding. So when you pump up and hold all four brakes, at this case, you start at the furthest point of the master. It's down. Pump it up. We can do this about three times per wheel, unless we get air. Pump it up. No air on this side, so now we're going to check the master and move over to the left rear. So repeat those, that procedure for to each wheel, starting right rear, left rear, then right front, then left front. In between each time, check your master, top it off, and replace the cap. Yeah. Pump it up. Pump it up. There we go. Pump it up. Pump it up. One more time. Down. Now I'm going to go to each wheel, clean them with brake clean, put the tires on. Now that my brakes are all bled and I'm ready to put the tires on, I'm going to top off my fluid right to the max line. Let it settle down. And replace the cover. The socket for the lug nuts is a 21 millimeter. Once I lower this to the ground, always tighten wheels in a star pattern. And our wheel torque on our 07 Mazda 3 is 87 foot-pounds. Always go around twice. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.